Make an announcement. They have to have two people, I think two people on site, and we have to move everybody out, out of the building, and then they have to do a walkthrough of the building and then also make another announcement. Um, in the event that I'm not there, I, some of you guys may remember Stephen Goble, who graduated a few years from Shelton Park. I actually gave him the key to the building and said, you know, Stephen, I trust you. Uh, if, if I'm not there, go in, make the announcement, make a walkthrough. I'd appreciate to get the key back when y'all finish, though. So. Uh, but just in the case that we didn't have somebody there, we wanted to be as safe as possible, especially we still have janitors that are working at night, so we wanted to make sure they were safe. So um, also if you'll notice, those barriers have been moved out. Those are supposed to be moved back before school starts. It would be nice if we could have the parking lot uh, fixed before school starts also. Um, on page four, at the very top, it says the damage to the parking lot will be corrected to the approval of the Shell Park High School officials. So that's kind of broad, you know. We'll have to talk about what exactly is the satisfaction of the board and the and Shell Park High School officials, our site base, Mr. Matt, our Superintendent Meadows and myself. But these are uh, this is their uh, correction remediation plan. It was administered on June fourth, and they have resumed blasting. And they have, if they're within so many, I think it's if they're within one thousand feet. And I'm not sure about that number. Then they have to clear. If they're back in the back in back a little black hog a little farther down, they don't have to clear, but they do still have to notify us before the blast. Okay. Are there any questions about the remediation plan? Uh, and again, this was something that this, the Department of Transportation developed, not focusing, not Robbie Fletcher. And this is something that they told us that they'd have to do. To. And you can see, see the two gentlemen that I met with at the time. Do you know if uh, insurance adjusters now to see you? Or no, they have not been out to see me. They did contact me the other day and they asked to see what were some of the what were some of the uh, some things need to be done. Um, I think that as far as the insurance adjuster, you know, the way from the from the board level thing, I'm sure Mr. Benson will do that. Okay, so the insurance adjuster will be able to determine how the damage. I would say the insurance adjuster would only tell you how much. It, how much? I don't know if they'd be able to tell you who, uh, unless they they contracted someone else to come in and look at it. I, I, I'm not for sure. That's just me guessing. Yeah. So looking at these pictures. Mm -hmm. So what kind of risk are we putting people at? I mean, what do you think? I think that uh, it would be very very wise before school started back if we could have a structural engineer come in and go through the building. I know that would be something that would cost some money. I mean, is any risk at all? Yes. It's too much. I, I agree. I agree. Uh, I think that if we could have a structural engineer and go, come and go through the building, it would be very nice just to say, hey, you know, these are things you're seeing. Now, something else that, you know, they have crack monitors, but, you know, the school system didn't have those put in. We didn't have them put in. That's something that Brandywine Focusing, Brandywine's the blasting company, had put in. So their data they have, they said we could have it, but, you know, I, here's an example. Uh, there is a, in Kim Smith's office in the middle of the building. I marked an area where a crack was. It's about this far up from the ground. It's actually spread all the way to the floor and went through the center of a cinder block. So, you know, it would be, I think, it, it, I would strongly recommend having a structural engineer come in and, and check things out before we start doing any type of back to school type activities. <coughs> Did they put up any kind of uh, seismograph? Yes, sir, they did. They put seismograph up and. Uh, okay, they give you any data from there? They give it to us, but they still they say they're well within state regulations, and that's that's what they tell us. They're within the two inch per second. And again, I'm I'm quoting numbers. I'm not real. So do they, familiar. Take, in, do they take into consideration the age of the building or anything like that? Like, the fact that they I do not. But now I, you know there were some there was already some cracks in the building. As Sergeant Rodriguez can attest, back in the JRTC room, I actually moved the JRTC group out of that room until we had. We actually had a, an engineer in the district, and I said, okay, I want you to come and look at this and tell me if it's okay if JROTC can go back in. And he gave it the okay and allowed the class to go back in, into that room. That's in the back corner of the gymnasium, back left corner. Mr. Meadows, do you think you could contact the yes, sir. engineer? And our insurance, and I'll contact the engineer as well. Yeah, can we go, oh, is Mr. Hudson? They have issued a final report on this thing yet as far as, as far as... They do have a report. They have several reports, but he said I would have to make an open records. Uh, well, I'm talking about his final, well, his final, final report, final investigative report on this most recent incident, the, the fly rock. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, this, is, this was the only thing that he gave me. 
he said anything else, and they had several other reports. There were several other reports he said that we could do an open records request for and we could get copies of those. But there were others. He said he felt like this is what I really need to see because I requested, I said, I need all the reports. I need everything to see everything. He said, Mr. Fletcher, I think this is what you really need to see. If you want to see the other items, then please do an open well, records request. And he said it won't be a problem. We can get it to you. Okay, well, I think it's interesting that they suspend it. Yes, they did. Oh, just, and, and, mm -hmm. I agree. And they revoked the certification to blast it. Yes. So that tells me that there was something. Oh, yeah. I mean, and he, that's why they're wrong. They actually, uh, one of the things that Mr. Hudson said is their shot is now smaller. They're not as long. Uh, and there's some other things that they had to do. They shot the crap out of it. <laughs> Figuratively speaking, absolutely. Yeah, they did. Yeah. Um, they are, they did. are there any other questions I can answer on the uh, on the blasting? That's you know, other than cracks in the building, and uh, those are the things that I'm aware of that are major uh, changes to the building since the blasting started. Uh, you know, again, I, I, I'd want to give a lot of credit to Mr. Terry Quillen because he he headed up a lot of the things and took a lot of the pictures, so he did a really good job on keeping up with these things. And actually, I met with him before today to talk to him about all the all the things that went on. I said, your principal there. Mm -hmm. And you've been Terry. And you've been there since you know, day one. Yes, sir. You can, can you see, this is not a professional thing, just from observing. Can you tell a difference? In the, the only thing I cracks? could actually tell you that, that I, I can honestly say there's a one bigger crack. There's one in Kim Smith's office that's a little bit longer because I personally marked it. Okay. You know, if without going through and getting the actual measurements of the crack monitors, I couldn't tell you absolutely this is one. Yeah. Uh, you know, without seeing those measurements. But that's that's the one that I knew. I marked it and I, I saw it. So. And other than than debris falling through the roof mm -hmm. into your boys' restroom. Yeah. Well, the only thing I worry about is when that building shakes. And you know, when the building shakes, we do have asbestos in it. So that's something else that I worry about now. Our as asbestos reports have been good for the past couple of years. That's the only thing that I really worry about is the asbestos in the ceilings. Uh, well, I can lead you on the effort. The pictures are very informative. You know, if I'm a parent though, and I'm looking at this, it's very worrisome. Mm -hmm. It's for the boy, I'm sure everybody can sort of Well, so far, you know, one of, one, of the, one of the first concerns that Superintendent Meadows had was you about the safety of the building. So that's one of the first questions he asked me when, when he and I talked. So uh, he's aware of, of the situation, he's aware of the age of the building, and that's one of the very first things he asked me when he came in. So I, I do appreciate that. I'm not sure if I'm addressing on this question, but mm -hmm. is there a chance the insurance company will deny? I do not know. They don't know. Not until they come in. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're welcome. The other one. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I can answer one. Okay. Yeah, answer that. Please, yeah. Mr. The insurance company is going to deny the client unless you can offer proof in the flash. Okay. If it's some water leak or something, they'll turn it down. If I haven't seen any of this material, but if, if fly off left the, the job, it's a violation of state law, and basically you're, it's a strict liability situation. If all you have to do is show causation, and they will have to pay. You're talking about a public building, right? and in order to, to prove damages or causation, you're going to have to have an architect. My suggestion would be that if you employ an architect, each architect that does school work works with its, uh, his, own, his own structural engineer, usually another, another firm, but they'll bring in a structural engineer if he thinks it's necessary. But if you're going to make a claim against your own carrier or against the, the people that did the blasting, uh, you're going to need to have a causation expert. And you're going to have to have, and that may or may not be your architect, but you're going to have, you, know, you ought to have an architect because if you were building this building, if you were remodeling this building, or if you're going to do any repair, you're probably going to have to bid out this work, and you'll have to have an architect to do it. And I wouldn't accept an insurance settlement from anybody until I had the, the architect and I knew, had an estimate of what the cost would be. Well, I think if you get an architect, the architect, all school architects work for some company in Lexington or Louisville that will have structural engineers. They do that as a matter of course. Just 
looking, in my opinion, for what it's worth, it's going to be easy to prove causation, of course, on the parking lot, and also from the cover of the light fixture falling, because we do have video footage. The one in the bathroom, there was some water damage, according to their engineers, so, you know, causation might be a little bit harder to determine. Now, again, I'm not an engineer that would be able to take that. You're welcome. Uh, the last thing that I'll go over with you kind of quickly, uh, I made a report to the board uh, several months ago about the ACTs, ACT scores. Um, one of the things that we've done, uh, progress monitoring wise, you're going to see two spreadsheets there. The top spreadsheet is actually all data on this junior class. The very first time we administered an ACT, we administered an ACT practice to the students on October 18th. At that point, their English ACT score was a 13. Their math was a 14. Their reading is 13.5. Their science reasoning is 13.6. Their composite was 13.6. At that point, we started doing remediation classes, including our red zone, uh, moving kids where they need to be. And then by February 21st, uh, the, we administered the February 21st one again, and our score was 16.6, .6, 15.7, 14.4, 14.7, 15.3. After we administered it that time, we actually did two weeks of kind of an intense area in the red zone of trying to get these students ready for the ACT. And again, we tried to target the skills that they were deficient in. On March 5th, these are actual state scores. Um, our, our composite was 15.3, and if you can see from October 18th to March 5th, from, from October 18th to March 5th, 14.1 to 16.8, these are the same students. Reading went from 13.5 to 17.2. Science reading went from 13.6 to 17.7. Composite went from 13.6 to 16.9. Now, I'm not happy with the 16.9. We, we our, our students can accomplish much more than this, but I'm trying to show you where we got the, where we got the kids as juniors, and again, uh, what we've done with them, where we took them in one year. The ACT trends over the past uh, five years, you can see our English scores, our math scores, reading scores, and science uh, reasoning. Uh, our composite did go. Uh, up from 16.2 to 16.9. We did have one student that was court ordered to take the ACT that scored a lot higher. Hopefully we're getting to that magic 17 number. Uh, goal for next year, we really feel like we can get to an 18. And we are uh, changing our red zone to strictly uh, go with uh, targeting students' skills based on their ACT scores. For example, um, even the kids that are scoring 31, 32, if we have some kids that are scoring 31, 32 in math, there will be a red zone just for those kids. I'm going to teach that red zone to try to get those kids' ACT scores a little bit higher. So last year, one of the things that we did was, and I think uh, Mr. Harless made points, and you know, Mr. Fletcher, we have a lot of kids that are just meeting benchmarks. They're at low levels. They're just getting there, but we don't have those top kids going farther. So one of the things that we're going to push for with their ACT, no matter what their ACT score is, we want it to be better. Uh, so that's what we're doing in our red zone. We're really shooting for those higher scores in it. So to start off the first half of the year, our entire red zone will be based on what the students need, based on their ACT practice tests that we be doing. And we've also gone through the SIG grant, wrote an amendment to get curriculum for this. So that's how we'll start off from day one. Actually, day, day two, every student in the building will be taking practice ACT. Any questions?